Anti-Maxine Waters will not be subpoenaing Max uh, Sam Bankman Freed to testify. And I wonder why. Uh, could it be because mm. she has a very cordial relationship with this man or because they've given $20 million to the Democratic Party? Or, 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 my theory, uh, why isn't Katie Porter on the House Financial Committee anymore? And who took her off? Maxine Waters. So it just kind of makes perfect sense. And so when people yeah. wonder why the Donald is still relevant and could very well be our president. This again, is why. This is a great example as to why, as far as I yeah. can see. Yeah, it's it's absolutely outrageous. And there's so many examples of this. There's also a surprisingly good antitrust bill that has effectively stalled in the Senate. Um and Amy Klobuchar is one of the sponsors, I believe. But why won't Chuck Schumer bring that up for a vote? Well, uh, I don't know. There's so one of his children either works for Facebook or one of these big tech companies or is associated with them. Um, so it, it, it always comes back to like, just follow the money and you get your answer for everything in politics nine times out of 10. Like a lot of this can be attributed to incompetence and stupidity. Sure. But the majority of the time, these politicians know what they're doing and it's all about corruption. Um, it's yeah. The Sa Sam Bankman freed situation the fact that he's not going to face any consequences is genuinely shocking to me. Um, but I say shocking, but at the same time, like I'm not surprised, but it's still like when you look at the details of that situation and you see how there's just, there, there's not going to be any changes after that, even then how can you expect anything in this country to change? Uh, I mean, the, the bare minimum would be for Democrats to approve Gigi Stone to the FCC so that way they can redo the uh, net neutrality provisions that were taken away back in 2017. This is what the uh, FCC chairwoman, Jessica Rosenworcel, wants to do, but she doesn't have the majority. It's deadlocked between two Democrats and two Republicans. So as a result, we just don't have any action and we whatever like it's like the ratchet effect right where republicans move us to the right and then democrats stop us from going back to where we were even right we just kind of keep drifting away and so it's deeply deeply frustrating yeah it's like wwf to me is so you guys are mm -hmm. gonna be the bad guys and if it wasn't like here's the thing people are like oh if it were just not for joe manchin or kirsten Sinema, wow. like, yeah, then it would be someone else Right. Like there's yeah. always going to be the designated bad guy. There's always going to be the person because when it really comes down to it, if the people in charge want something done, they get it done. So when they don't, that this is the kind of bullshit theater that we have to watch. And as much as people hate Trump, they hate the D.C. establishment even more. And I frankly don't blame them. And this picture right here is emblematic of impropriety. Mm -hmm. Why does these two individuals or why do these two individuals have this cordial relationship when there is a serious legal case taking place right now that this lady, Maxine Waters, is supposed to be overseeing? It makes absolutely yeah. no sense. Yeah, it's 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 really annoying to me, too. Uh, like this needs to be called out and the donations that he gave to Democrats absolutely needs to be highlighted. But I can't help but like roll my eyes when Republicans are like, oh, well, see, they they gave all this money to Democrats, so they don't want to take action. Yeah, but like Comcast and Verizon and AT&T give money to your party and you won't uh, lift a finger to help pass Gigi Sohn. Like Gigi Sohn is a very progressive. She would be an, a very progressive FCC commissioner. Um but they're trying to attack her saying that she's like too woke and she wants to censor Republicans when she quite literally is like pro freedom on the Internet. Like she supports net neutrality. Right. Um, right. So it's like the, it's it's always like pointing the fingers like, oh, well, see, so you got all these donations. I mean, at least we're talking about corruption kind of in some ways. Um, so it's a step in the right direction. But like they'll call they'll call them out. But it's like pot calling the kettle black. It's just really frustrating. Yeah. It's not just frustrating. It's the fact that we can see the train heading towards us pretty much in enough time to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. and yet for some reason, people are not getting out of the way. They're continuing to allow this to happen. And it's a cycle of events. You know, the good news is, is that a lot of people are kind of seeing through it now. 
but we're still trying to peel back the onion and make people realize that it isn't one person. It's the system that's broken. Our economic mm-hmm. and political system is broken. And how do I know this? Because the Democratic Party right now, on behalf of Joe Biden, is literally trying to have South Carolina be the first state in the nation for the 2024 primary. What mm-hmm. that tells me is, is that oh. they're not interested in democracy. No. They're interested in protecting their investment, because that's all Joe really is at this point, with all due respect. He is a man in severe cognitive decline, but he is still the president, and he's still in the D.C. world, especially in the Beltway. There are a lot of people that are dependent on the current president for a very comfortable lifestyle, and they will go to great lengths to protect that, even if it means propping him up when he has no business doing this. I still think he should be challenged in 24, but my theory And I would love to hear your opinion on this. And Jen and I have talked about it. I'm not sure if going in the direction of sort of like a known political commodity actually makes sense. I actually think a labor leader slash organizer, especially in light of what he just did to the railroad workers, would probably make the most sense. Get like a real, you know, I don't want to say Jimmy Hoffa, but you're like a real type of barn burning labor organizer to run for president. To me, Mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense. And I think it would galvanize a lot of people. Your thoughts on that? Oh yeah, I absolutely agree. I would love to see that. Um, uh, Somebody who has the chops to organize, somebody who knows how to get people out. Absolutely. Um, But I just... And I don't want to be too doom and gloom, but the the odds of him getting successfully primaried in 2024 is very, very small. Um, I'm not going to say zero, but it's very low. Um, And it sucks because I think that if he continues to remain as president and he's the nominee once again, that drastically reduces the Democratic Party's chance, chances. And I like the idea of like this unknown quantity because I'm so sick and tired of seeing, seeing the same faces recycled every couple of years. Like, I don't want to go back and forth again between like, oh, Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, Kamala Harris. Um, we did this before with like Hillary Clinton. She kept popping up. It's like, okay, we need new faces. And the Democratic Party, it's not like there's this lack of rising stars it's that whenever there's an actual working class hero that emerges, they do everything in their power to stifle them and screw them over. Um, and the actual rising stars that like the corporate class likes aren't really any, any different, right? Like you may have somebody yeah. who's younger than Joe Biden, but it's it's continuity on the inside, change on the outside. So this was my response when like Nancy Pelosi stepped down. And I saw that Hakeem Jeffries was going to be the new leader. Like I saw these articles about how, oh, well, this is a new generation taking over. But it's like, but who cares? His ideology is identical to Nancy Pelosi's. And if anything, he's more hostile towards the left. So this isn't going to change a single thing. And I I think that people, well-minded liberals, love them. But they think that all it's going to take is a change in leadership for the Democratic Party. Let the new generation take over. But that is so short-sighted because it's it's not just the people. As you said, it's the system itself. And if the system remains in place and it doesn't change, then you will see no changes with the Democratic Party. But the Democratic Party, they're kind of in this convenient situation to where they really don't have to do anything, if you think about no. it, right? We get frustrated with them, and then they lose an election because people stay home. But then we're reminded how terrible and frightening the Republican Party is. And they are. They're absolutely horrific and we should oppose them. But then people run right back into the, into the arms of Democrats because, I mean, there's no option. We live in a two party system and nobody is pushing for institutional changes that would subvert that duopoly. Right. So it's like we go back and forth, you know. Democrats, Republicans, Democrats, Republicans. And meanwhile, as we continue to go back and forth, nothing changes. And we just, as a country, circle the drain even more. Uh, The one silver lining, though, because I don't like to be too doomer, is that I will say the rise in labor, that is really the cause for hopium for me. So whenever I start to feel a little bit too like doom and gloom or depressed, I think back to what was accomplished this year, like with Chris Smalls organizing the first union at, at Amazon. Yeah. People don't understand how significant that is with how Starbucks in December of last year went from the first store being unionized to now over 200, I believe. That is absolutely like that's yeah. unprecedented. None of us has seen this in our lifetimes. Um, so 
that's that's the one thing that gives me hope because I don't think that the changes are going to come from the top down. Like it's going to come from bottom up. It's going to be external. It's not going to be like people in Congress are like, all right, guys, maybe we should do a little bit better, right? No, it's going to be from labor because uh, labor is the backbone is uh, backbone of this country. So that's my thoughts on it. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.